<laughs> this is me, back in July of 2016. So young, handsome, naive. That behind me is the tallest peak in all of Northeast China, Chengbai Mountain. And definitely not a painting. Four years ago, I hopped on a plane to the other side of the world, and 20 odd hours later, I arrived in Changchun. Where? There. Changchun. I had never heard of it either. It's this industrial hub in the heart of China's frigid northeast. A city of 4 million people, which somehow makes it medium-sized by Chinese standards. Some important stuff happened here during World War II, but nowadays Changchun's mostly known for auto manufacturing. And there are a lot of cars and a lot of erratic drivers. The pictures do not do justice to the driving. The reason I had traveled all this way risking my life on the mean streets of Changchun was to make a documentary about the Manchu people who call this area home. The experience was chaotic, confusing, amazing, extremely stressful, and utterly unforgettable. My head is filled with so many memories from my time in China. But there's one aspect of my experience that I just keep coming back to over and over and over. The food. The food in China was just incredible. I've never eaten so well as I did over those two and a half weeks in Changchun. I got to try so many different dishes from all different parts of China, most of which I had never seen or heard of before. And don't get me wrong, it's not like I loved every single thing I got to eat, but food just plays such a central role in how I remember my time in China. So here I am, four years later, with all my memories back on the other side of the world. I live here, in Vancouver the city of glass where the mountains meet the sea. It's known for its beautiful nature, high cost of living, aloof locals, and never-ending rain. We lovingly refer to it as No Fun City. But Vancouver also has ties to China that actually predate the city itself, so there are many great options when I'm feeling nostalgic and I want to show off my chopstick skills. This is one of my favorites, ginger beef. Crispy beef covered in a sweet and spicy ginger sauce. Oh, it's delicious. It's so good. But it's clearly adapted to a Western palate. It reminds me more of being a mall rat at the food court, and it doesn't really remind me of my time in China. Okay, everyone knows these. Dumplings. There are dozens of kinds of dumplings in China, but these ones are called... You know what? Instead of butchering the Chinese language, I'm going to let a robot do it. Jiaozi. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, these actually really remind me of the dumplings I had in Changchun. They have a thick wrapper, which I guess is characteristic of Northeast China. Dumplings are actually one of the first things I ate in China. I had them when I first went to meet local Changchun artist Li Xia. I remember being so nervous. I was jet lagged making this film in a language I don't speak, 
with a bunch of people who I barely knew. But as soon as those dumplings came to the table, she smiled, we all laughed together, and she turned out to be a really important part of my documentary. She makes these massive, intricately detailed paper cuts that capture the Manchu legends and folklore of her ancestors. Everywhere you look, there's deeper and deeper layers of symbolism. And she gave me a copy of this book that she wrote, which I still can't read, but it has lots of pictures. So that's nice. So, dumplings are great, obviously, but I feel like I want something more unique to my time in Changchun. I think I have an idea. We're hitting the streets of No Fun City, baby. This is what I came for. Around here, they call it Chinese barbecue, but in China, they're Chuan. They're these mouth-watering skewers of grilled lamb, sometimes other stuff. They have their origins in the far west of China along the Silk Road, but now you can pretty much find them across the country, and especially in the Northeast. Okay, these are good, but it still doesn't really remind me of China. In Changchun, I remember these stalls out on the street, grilling their meat right in front of you. And I remember smelling the smoke and charcoal in the air, especially at night. And I remember walking the city streets after sunset. People would be out at their local restaurant, eating skewers, drinking beer, having a good time. There was such a lively atmosphere on those summer nights compared to here in No Fun City, especially in these strange times. It's just not the same as when I was in China. The feeling just isn't the same. I guess it just isn't that easy to recapture and relive my experience. But there is one dish that I feel really encapsulated Changchun for me. I don't even know if it's really a dish. It's more of a experience. I'm talking about, uh, Huoguo. also known as hot pot. The name kind of says it all. Meat, vegetables, mushrooms, tofu, all kinds of other things that I would struggle to source here in Vancouver, and they're all cooked by you in this simmering broth that gets more and more flavorful as the evening goes on. But hot pot isn't exactly something you just eat by yourself. When I think about having hot pot in China, yeah, it was delicious, but it was this really fun and intimate way of sharing a meal. I guess my time in China wasn't really all about the food. Yeah, I have a weird number of pictures of me eating, but that's because I had all these great people around me taking those pictures. Those people that I barely knew turned out to be great friends. I remember how excited they were to show me all this delicious food. And I remember working late into the night together to get our film finished on time. And on my last day, they all took me to this crazy water park, even though we barely slept. It was amazing. And I remember those goofy shirts that the university made us all wear. They were profoundly uncomfortable, but they insisted we wear them like some kind of filmmaker's uniform. I still have it, and it's still profoundly uncomfortable. Possibly because I'm not as skinny as I used to be. I talk a lot about wanting to go back to China, but the way the world is in 2020, I don't know when I'm going to get that chance. But when I do, I know that there will be good food 
and good friends waiting for me.